I got lost in the middle of the largest pineapple farm in Ghana. to know that it's owned by Ghanaians. How do you feel anytime you walk in here? I feel so happy and proud. I mean, I get in here and I cast my mind back to the early days that we came here, it was all bush. And then I look at the things that we dreamt we could do. And to tell you the truth, we've exceeded what we expected we were going to do. I mean, whenever you see stuff like this in the motherland, it's always owned by people that don't look like me. And as a proud ambassador for Made in Africa Goods, you know what, I need to share this exciting news with you all. But hey, first of all, like this video. If you are also proud of what you're seeing, share this video so that others can have a piece of this. And if it's your first time seeing this face on your screen, subscribe to be part of this awesome channel. Believe me or not, the revolution is happening and it's happening right in front of your eyes and it's about time each and every African needs to get involved to see Africans converting raw materials into a finished product. It's something that we all need to talk about. clapping for you because you guys are changing the narrative. Sure. The narrative of Africans always exporting raw materials to the West for them to turn it into a finished good and send back. it back to us for us to buy. That's the kind of revolution we are putting up here. So um, we are just harnessing the energy and the potentials of Africa to produce world-class products and put it out there. And, and that's what we're doing. And once again, it's done by Africans. Sure, sure. Full Africans. It means Africans are capable. We are more than capable. And we have shown that uh, by our projects, looking at the, the total value chain, looking at um, us going, moving from land preparation all the way to that box of juice that you see on the shelf in Walmart. It comes from us. That's incredible. I know. If you really want to have a taste of this natural juice from Ghana, check the link in the description and trust me, your support will go a very, very long way. I, listen, I've never seen a farm in this nature. I mean, it's so large that I feel like I'm in a new city. <laughs> What's the name of this farm? Okay, so we are in the Sardo part of uh, the Kufi district. So this farm is called the Sardo site. And how we many? We normally call it Utuam. How many acres? Okay, so presently we are, we are in the thousands. We are, we are around a thousand now. But the, the truth is that we grow every day because we harvest every day to produce every day. So, I mean, it goes like that. But if you want us to take the exact figures, we have to now come in to take the figures. But we are, we are, we are in the thousand on this plot. But then there are others like we saw this morning um, on another side. We have another 7,800 on another side. But we have um, six of these large sites. And then there are other smaller sites. We call them smaller, but they are not smaller. There are 200 acres, there are 150 acres, but we call them small ones because we are looking at these, these bastards. In, in total, how many acres of land fits the factory? Okay, so um, we need, for the factory to run good at the barest minimum, we need around four, 5,000 acres of, of pineapples. Yes, but we are targeting 12,000 as we speak. So you see a lot of new works going on and all of that. And remember, we're not processing only pineapple. So this volume added to the other produce that we use, like the citrus, like the passion, like the ginger, gives us that variety that we can put out there. You know, he mentioned the name of this farm, yes. but I think 
it's a city on its own. Sure. So please, I have a name and you guys need to pay me for me to give you the name. Sure, so welcome to the Pineapple City. Wow, then um, possibly what we should have is Pineapple City 1. Because <laughs> this is what it said. There are many of these. No. Six of these you'll no. see today. So, so community one of its one. Exactly. <laughs> see, the name is coming yes, out. Yes, yes, yes. This is so incredible. Yes, yes. We call it um, a sea of pineapples. A sea of pineapples. Sea of pineapples. To do a full tour, you need you need an helicopter to do this. To do a full tour. I think even the drone cannot because do justice to it. you send your drone and it doesn't go to the end. No. Yeah, yeah that's what happens. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I've never seen anything like this. And, and all of this has been, I've been got in here. We got here through the energies of the people here. And wow. the agronomy director he spoke to this morning mm. is doing a fantastic job. He's the one, if I'd seen to all of this, he virtually lives here. And, 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 and please, he's also a Ghanaian. Sure, sure. Everybody here is a Ghanaian. <laughs> Whose idea is this? <laughs> so, um, these ideas came from Ghanaians who sat down and said, let's try to change the narrative. Well, you travel out there and you see juices and other products. That can be, can be done from here. But the narrative has always been, okay, take the, the raw material out there and get it done. Then we say no. But what's the rocket science in all of this? Hmm. We should do it. So we put our energies to it and then we put our pens to the task. And here we are. So we have our hands and our pens all, all, all get, getting us here at this moment. What type of pineapple are you guys growing in here at the moment? So what we are doing here is um, sugar loaf here. We have smooth cayenne. We also have MD2 as another variety that we process here. Uh, we are doing trials for another variety called Queen Victoria. So at least with these, these four, the, the three major and then the one on trial. But a combination of this mm. is what gives us the, that premium juice you have on the, on the shelves. What makes your juice so special? It is, it is. Because the juice is, is just what it is. It is, um, it is the syrup or the extract from the fruit itself and nothing more. No water, no additive, nothing, zero. So we see from the factory, processing to see that whatever we take from here is what we put out there and it is what it is. So if we say juice, that's why ours is called a pure juice. It is unadulterated juice. Nothing mixed, not even a drop of water. And that makes us unique. I'm a bit curious in terms of all the pineapple that I see in here. Sure. So let's go for one acre. Sure. On an acre, how many pineapples can you cultivate on an acre? So on an, on an acre, you're doing around 20,000 pineapples on an acre. That gives you millions of pineapples that we So on make. a thousand acre, I'm a very good mathematician. 20 million. Exactly, on a thousand. But that's for just this plot. So count the other plots that we will visit. That tells you the, the, the millions of fruits that we have here to feed the factory. This is the only farm that I've seen that people plant every day and harvest every single day. So we process every day. That, then that comes to my next question. Oh, you process every day? Sure. How many people have you employed then? <laughs> Okay, so uh, we're, we're just migrating onto our second shift. But for now, we're around, we're around um, 75 for the first shift. But we're training for the second shift as well. So you see, all that we have here, which were grown from last year, uh, about about maturing. Mm. And then they will be ready for processing. So we need more hands, so we have more people coming to join us here, at least on the factory side. Okay. So, so yeah. on the farm, for yeah. the various farm sites, yeah. we are close to 800 as we speak. But you know, there's, there's a new development coming up and that means more hands coming on. So very soon we'll, we'll hit the thousand mark on the farm. And it's so exciting that when I came here, they are really empowering women sure. to see the female uh, who was plowing the land. It shouldn't surprise you. Um, the majority of our workforce here are actually women. We, wow. found that we, we find the women um, more reliable, they are loyal and um, they're hardworking mm. and all of that. We find that super. And so we have empowered them to to be doing what work we do here. One thing that you didn't say is that women know how to take care of things. Yes, That's yes, why sure. your mom is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I can't forget that one. I can't forget that one. You can't forget they, they that one. They take care of us exactly. here. Exactly. And they take the same, they use the same kind of care for, for the plants as well. And so we have empowered them. So out here you have women driving the tractors, plowing the land, not just doing the many hour work, but we're empowering them to be doing, doing some more. And we have women doing all of that. I mean, creating job for over 700 people. Sure, that's it for now. 
for now. Yes. It means that when you guys came in here, all these 700 people were on the street, no jobs. Sure. So um, basically, yes. So you look at the workforce that we have here. Most were hanging around. Uh, so there were even some who converted from being fishermen. And then they are in here now as, as farmers or working on the farms. Wow. So that's what it is. A lot more also completed school. And, you know, the world was like open for them and they didn't even know what to do. And we had to bring them in here and train them to be doing value-added um, activities here. Hmm. So, so we're empowering the youth, we're empowering women, we're empowering everybody here. I passed here every single day, but I never knew that this is the story of the young men behind the Ekunfi juice right here. My brother, we have a call here. Hey, now who turned Ekunfi juice? Ah, uh, we say that we turned Ekunfi juice. Hey, now those my Asha, tell me, what brand ambassador? Eh, um, you say I'm a brand ambassador. I'm Ekunfi. Oh, yeah, brand ambassador, I'm Ekunfi. Nice one. Now, before Ekunfi juice, now where are they? Let me get Galamse. Let me get Galamse. And I say, Galamse. Sir, we took Galamse. Hey, how are you from? I watch him cross so. Oh, but when you dance, you learn that don't mean you I wanna get you to Galamse. Wow. Then it's just an galam. Where Jai Galamse? It's a Jai. And I wear the part time. It's a Jai. Where Jai? I will tell you Jai. It's a a kufi abba. I'm a kufi scar or mama no. I just say Galamse. It's a there. Me wa kufi. I'm a friend. Me yere ne me ma. Me yere ne umba. Sa. Nice. Wa matre. It's a me show be ama me hotel. Na ahanu ejina ha e de na de. It's a me ton a kufi juice no. It's a she de a ton makas na ne rabe. Me ton makas no. We no a di three four no. A pepper anti. We ton makas no. A big shout out to the people behind the Kung Fu Juice for changing lives like this. I still love the fact that uh, you guys are empowering the people mm -hmm. around this whole area. Sure. I mean, we are in the central region, right? Yes, yes, we are, we are deep in the central region. This is a Kunfi district in the central region. So, sitting in between Gomua and Enfansaman. When I was coming here, I realized that the road around this place, everything has been done. Right, so every road you see here, that goes through the farms and, and in the adjoining farms and the territories that we work here, was part of our project so we had to do all these roads um first of all it opens up the district so now so now this road from where we came as we so we came in through the gomua district mm. but we didn't go back to the highway we just had to walk through our road to enter a conflict district so whoever wants to trade now trade at gomua dego and wants to do some trading at say um, um otuam mm. doesn't have to go to the the highway and come back through we just have to come through our pineapple road and so we have, we have many of these. It's as part of the <laughs> part of our development agenda to open up the place. So it's not just for the farms. Mm. There are many other communities that we are using our machinery to do the road for them. Mm. Aside the roads, mm. we are also um, digging dams. So for example, on this side, we have two major dams sitting out here to give us water and to give to the community in, in, in their time of need. Not just the dams, we have 10 boreholes sitting here on the site. So that's what we do for all the sites. So for all the sites that we go to, you find dams as a source of water, you, have, you find the boreholes, and then you find the roads. And then we are trying to stretch out into the communities as well. Hmm. So we'll just be called and say there's a, bad, there's a road here which is bad. Normally when they, they say there's a, there's a major funeral here, we need to work on our roads. And then we'll take our machinery in there and then prepare the road for them. That's really incredible that you guys are touching lives sure. in here. I know you guys are farming in the commercial side, sure. but do you still outsource some of the farms? So, um, we don't directly outsource. We have, we have three planting schemes here. So first one is um, one that we do with the, with the people in the communities. Okay. We call it a shared grower scheme. And that one 
uh, it is a, it's a very special arrangement where we acquire land and then put the like cooperatives, we put them on the land and then we give them everything they need to be farmers, mm. including stipends at the end of the month and all of that. This scheme produces a certain output. So at harvest, um, aside all the accoutrements that we've given them and the stipend and all of that, at harvest, we do a division into three. So one part goes to us. Another part goes to them as a group to mm. share mm. as, as their, their share of the revenue. And then the, the third part goes for all the agronomic practices that we do here. But that is for the first scheme. Mm. For the second scheme is it's totally independent people who want to grow for us. It is important that they contact us even before we start the land preparation because for us it is too important uh, beginning from the land preparation. It has to be by, by our specification. Okay. I told you that this juice that we have is just a matter of squeezing. So we don't want to risk public health by just taking any fruits. So we have to be with you from point one. Grow with you. So we are, once you come into this scheme, we put a supervisor to your team and he takes you from, from land preparation right to harvest. Hmm. That is to be sure that it meets our specification because all that we're going to do on the, in the, on the factory floor is to take this pineapple, take it through extraction to take the juice, box the juice, and it's out today. So it's important. So that's the second scheme. And the third scheme is what you see here. Mm. This is the company-owned farms. So we have that. So we have these three schemes um, out there for people to participate in these pineapples. So you can choose, or whoever wants to join us can choose any of these. So either you come into the, the OS1, which is the shared grower scheme, or you do the independent one, where we'll support you with technical knowledge and all of that. And then this is uh, what we are doing here. So we have these schemes out here to get people to join. Does it, does it mean that I can also be a farmer for you? Sure. So there's a, there's a company, there's actually a company called Crop Estate. Okay. So what they have done is that they have an arrangement with us that look here, we will operate in the first scheme, but we will have our own set of farmers. So they have also employed another, another um, professional farm company. And then they are inviting, um, I can call it investment, but they are inviting people who want to do farm mm. to, to work through them. So they will give you a, a portion of land, but they're going to do all that for you for a revenue share with you. So that's wow. also a scheme where we, we're operating over here. And so um, as part of reaching out to the community mm. in general, so we see some of the farms that the communities have done. But interestingly, there's this educational institute here John Evans Atamel Senior High School. Mm. So because this major farm is right opposite their school, they approach that and say, we see you working out here every day. We also have land, what can you do for us? So we sat down with them, we went through all of that, and now they have a school farm. And wow. this farm is a pineapple farm, done with our expertise and all of that, but they, 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 they take care of the farm. And so they also sell to the factory. So that's one of the schemes. So they're making a lot of revenues from pineapple farming because the factory buys from them. I hope the money is for the student. Um, we pay them. <laughs> <laughs> we pay them, so that goes into, it is a day school. Yeah. So they need a lot of support in terms of transport, in terms of lunch and all of that. So we support um, the school and we also buy from them and pay the school. Fortunately, our juice, our premium juice, it sits so well wherever we take it. So the demand is high and that gives us the impetus to keep going and going and going and going. Proudly, we are, we, are very, we are the largest producer of pineapple in Ghana as we speak. Hmm. I'm, I'm here to get the figures for West Africa and Africa as a whole. Then we'll put it together and see where we stand. But we are, we are really huge. This is a huge farm. How do you irrigate? So thankfully, pineapple is a, is a tropical plant. It hmm. doesn't need so much water okay. to do it. But um, it has, it has its own nature. It, uh, it easily converts dew to water. So well, you, you can, can see, see from here. In the evening, the dew forms and then st stops here and then runs down as water. So you can see in the belly of the pineapple, there's water, there's water that dispenses gradually to the ground. Now on the surface, as you saw from the, the newly um, developed areas, there are these polities, we call it the, the mulch, the, this plastic mulch, mm. but these are biodegradable. Hmm. So it goes off. I mean, after the one year, one and a half years that the pineapple will stand here, by the time we have to tend the soil, this one is already gone. It's biodegradable. So what it does is that 
it lays on the ground and keeps the place moist. So this water standing here, when it dispenses to the ground, hmm. it doesn't lend itself too much to evaporation. It slows down the process of ev evaporation. And also, with the rubber, it gives us the capillary action. Where there's a rise from the ground, it hits the rubber and goes back as water. So these are some of the, the technology we have, we have um, put here to get us going. But basically, it makes its own water dispense down to help them to grow better. I want to ask you my final question. Sure. This is the raw material. Yes. And you guys are like adding value to it. Yes. The whole farm. Yes. With the 20 million fruits that you have, yes. before you convert them, would you say the raw material is more profitable or after you add value? Obviously, that obviously, obviously. So I take this fruit. Yeah. And it costs maybe two cities, maybe four cities. But I process it by adding value. I squeeze it, but I can sell it more than I would have sold the raw fruit. That's the first one. The second one is that once I, pro I, I put it in a box, I elongate its life span, span on, the, on the shelves, for example. So I, put, I harvest from here and it takes me a week, max a week and a half, I should consume this one. But I take it to the factory, it is squeezed, pasteurized and put in a box and it stays for one year. So that's, that's what value addition does to it. You add value to it to increase the value and you add va um, value to it to increase its lifespan. Does it mean you encourage more Africans to add value to the raw materials that we have instead of always exporting our raw materials? So let me, let me loosely call it a target. That is our target. We want to, to see every product coming from Africa going through at least one or two levels of processing to get it to one, increase value, two, increase the lifespan, because that's what we see out there. Too bad that we have to carry raw materials out there. So if I'm carrying pineapples, for example, I'm just thinking, I juice and I make just about 50% as my juice way of my weight as my juice. So if I carry all this whole fruit there, I'm sending 100% of something that I would need only half of. So that is even waste. And whoever is buying it is also considering the waste factor and will factor it in the price that I will give him. So I would, he will have to give me low than I, 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 I would ask for. But if I process, for example, if I have processed and it's already juice and it's going out there, what you are buying is juice. Hmm. There's no excuse about it. I have to also go and process and add this one. So give me at a lower value. Give me as a value of juice. And this juice is premium, not from concentrate, this is no additives, no sugar, no water, zero additive. Um, I would love to see the factory. Sure. Would you take me there? Sure, most welcome. Let's go to see what, <laughs> what happens in the factory. It's more like farm to factory. Sure, sure. <laughs> because that is what happens from, yeah. um, from planting mm -hmm. to, to maturity to day of harvest. That is today. And this process of harvesting triggers a processing. So from here, it moves straight to the factory because in the factory, we don't store anything. It comes directly from the farm, straight into the pool, and production begins.